branch in both political science as well as in uh, law that is comparative constitutions comparative study of different political systems see what is happening if a political scientist is planning to study various political systems he will be using social anthropological methods i have already mentioned field work descriptive analysis and all that but what are the differences between these two first and foremost difference is what is the subject matter of these two sciences social anthropology is a comprehensive study of human being political science economics or geography literature or psychology they are not comprehensive sciences they take any only one dimension of human life second one is do all the social scientists are using social anthropological methods they are not the only methods which they use they have various other methods also in order to collect data and analysis for instance scientific method where we will be collecting data by using questionnaire and all that or other scientific method where we'll be asking a person to sit in a relaxed way and narrate how he feels what he remembers and all that for instance if you take political science if you want to know whether bjp party is going to win now we are having elections in five different uh, states whether bjp is going to win or not what we usually do we have one separate branch in political science cephalogy it is known as in cephalogy we will be giving questionnaire to the persons and will be collecting data from them through questionnaire or we can also take opinion poll or opinion survey in fact in some of the countries opinion survey which is nothing but a kind of questionnaire questionnaire come interview uh, determines who is going to be the president for instance america in america unlike our country it is not only voting prior to that we conduct opinion polls there and on the basis of opinion polls weightages will be given to the candidates in other countries also usually for instance in uk also we usually follow but there we are having monarchy still it is not completely democratic country still we are having prince or queen etc if you go to certain islamic countries khalifa system where the religious person also is a political head of the country caliphate we usually say is prevalent in those countries like this we are having different methods to study political scenario if we take the link between political science and social anthropology we have to see the result of connection between social anthropology and political science similarly social anthropology and economics when social anthropology conjoins with political science there emerges a new branch in anthropology that is political anthropology it studies the origin develop emergence and development of political institutions in tribal societies not in modern societies but in tribal societies and anyway, we are going to discuss about these aspects when we talk about political systems or polity in tribal societies similarly we have economic anthropology harris covers have already mentioned his name just now harris covers is termed as father of economic anthropology he described the development of various economic systems on the basis of his tribal community and their studies similarly we have crowe or henry main or garden child all these persons are termed as economic anthropologists they study uh, they studied the primitive communities in order to understand the origin development of various economic institutions psychological anthropology have already made a mention in our last class 
there is a link between psychology and the social anthropology psychology of course talks about only one person what he usually do how he thinks how he develops relationships and all that it also talks about the psychological characteristics of human beings this part is a part of social anthropology in social anthropology on the basis of various primitive societies and their study we usually come to certain conclusions like people belonging to this particular area will be having this type of psychological characteristics so that is known as psychological anthropology besides these social anthropology also is linked with literature you may say literature is not a social science how social anthropology is linked with <coughs> there is a link the reason is whatever information we should have in order to study <coughs> one second ma i'll take a sip of water and come up most of the tribal communities are purely literate societies they don't know how to record their history but still we are having so many aspects one such aspect is literature their songs their stories their mythological stories all these provide inputs for our study of tribal communities in this context literature is directly linked with social anthropology let us take a simplest example very recently in nagoba festival we have performed in telangana state similarly we are going to have other festival namely medaram jatara i think these names are familiar to you right or you might have heard about a particular tribal community like goons here i think you might have seen in newspaper stories or you yourself might have gone to these festivities and might have participated nowhere it is in writing oral literature is there who started that in what way that particular clan people are linked with a, with that uh, uh, festivity for instance nagoba festival where one mesram one particular lineage people are expected to do various activities various rituals and who says so they are having lot of oral literature in the form of stories song stories or in the form of stories in the form of rituals in the form of once again i have to use that word oral literature a particular community is very famous we say how how to know for instance let's take a simplest example oggu katha you might have heard about this right it's a kind of song story and what this song story talks about it talks about the origin of a particular community and its ups and downs or development as well as progression of a particular community tribal or non tribal i am not going into that discussion here but a particular tribal community we are having certain stories like a katamarazu katha and this katamarazu katha is once again a story of a particular community so this all these are literature if you are studying social anthropology you will be gaining information from these stories only these song stories only hence literature as well as social anthropology are closely linked together and many social anthropologists have used literature in order to know about the community whatever community they are studying for instance badaga toda are khond all these communities were studied by anthropologists in our country not our people indian people but western societies 
British anthropologists as well as American anthropologists have studied them. Later, many British anthropologists started studying villages, village studies during 1950 to 1970. We have so many village studies. Many of them are from, let us say, between Oscar Lewis or William Mark, Baijo, to name one or two. They are all from Britain. They are not from our country. But they studied these village communities in total in a comprehensive way. And while studying, they have taken inputs from the literature and all that. So this is in a nutshell about social anthropology. It's a relationship with other social sciences, like sociology, uh, political science, economics, psychology, literature. And one aspect is that just like sociology and social anthropology, even here also, we can consider them as twin sister, that is history. History talks about what has happened, not the present one, not the future one, but what has happened, the past. Even social anthropology also describes past, how we used to be, how we have developed. So here there is a similarity between history and social anthropology. One difference we see here is history talks about human beings, human societies, etc. When script started, prior to that, it will not say anything. You please try to read any historical accounts or history in general. We usually start with one political scenario or one political leader, kings, and the, what type of let us say, expansion for their empire. What did they do? Or what type of reforms they have introduced? We usually study in our history. All these are linked with only written documents. These written documents may be anything. They may be, let us say, literary works. They may be kaifiyats or they may be some letters between persons or kings, etc., etc. Or they may be some inscriptions. But all these are in writing. They will not take unwritten history or pre-literate societies into their fold. Whereas social anthropology concentrates on, focuses on pre-literate societies. The subject matter though, talking about origin development, et cetera, et cetera. But what type of information they are collecting from whom the inputs part is different between history and social anthropology. Of course, in social anthropology, we are having history of social anthropology. Yesterday, in fact, we were doing that only. Here we'll be taking how social anthropological writing was started, who started it, and how it developed into various theories, how these theories also were questioned by one theory and uh, that which resulted in establishment of another theory. This part is known as historical anthropology. This is a kind of combination of both history and anthropology. This is about our third unit. I hope you understood. Have you? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Shall we proceed to the next unit? Hello? Those who are having books, they can refer. Others, they can take a piece of paper and uh, pen you please make a note that we are going to the next unit that is unit three which talks about tribes its characteristics and also geographical distribution of tribes in india i think all of you are now well aware that our social anthropology studies primitive tribes of course this the word primitive is a little bit uh, tricky word because government classifies tribes into various categories, most primitive, primitive, little advanced, I like that semi-advanced, like there's so many categories are there. For instance, in our state, Telangana, we are having the most primitive tribe, namely Chenjus. Compared to Chenjus, Yerukala, Yenadi, these tribal communities are primitive. Compared to primitive, Tribes like Kondaredis or Lombardas are advanced tribes. So like that, we are having some classifications by our census uh, pundits as well as government. Not only that, on the basis of where they are 
residing we usually categorize them as people from hilly areas or people from plains like that whatever it is are there any common characteristics of a tribe our answer would be an affirmative yes if yes what are they immediately the question follows i know that but before going into that we should know whom we can consider as a tribal community why this i know you are going to ask if you see the constitution we are providing certain protections to the scheduled tribes the word scheduled is a crucial one on the basis of certain parameters on the basis of certain criteria governor or president declares some communities as primitive communities our country of course even other countries also has seen certain moments for instance nearly some 12 years ago in uttar pradesh some people economically they are wealthy education wise also okay politically they are more powerful but they were on roads saying that consider our community name as a scheduled tribe i am not going into any other details like why they wanted to have and all that but in order to ask the government to declare them as scheduled tribe they have taken one of the characteristics which they follow even today that is child marriage in our community we are having child marriages we are still following child marriage hence we are not developed hence our caste uh, community name should be included into the list of the scheduled tribes they were fighting for that in such a scenario don't you think any student of social anthropology will have a doubt how to define a tribe if tribal person is having economic power political power but not education and some of the superstitious beliefs are there can we consider that particular tribe as a tribe no it is not possible like that we are have certain specific definitions for tribe so in this unit we'll be talking about the definition of tribe characteristics of tribe then about our country where we come across which tribe that is geographical location of tribes in india these points will be discussing now if it is okay please note down some points related to tribal community many people lp vidyarthi or higher end department or many other anthropologists ivan spichard and all those people particularly when they were studying about indian tribal communities they try to differentiate a tribe from caste they clearly said that a tribe is not a caste a caste is not a tribe then what is a tribe all these studies clearly conclude that ethnic group can be declared as a tribe and we are talking about the definition of tribe only here so what is meant by ethnic groups they should have their own culture their own language their own rituals rights their own economic system their own political system then such group is termed as an ethnic group and how to know about this ethnic groups in our country let me focus only on our country during census we collect data as to all these aspects on the basis of that data we declare certain communities as scheduled tribes certain other communities not as scheduled tribes but it is not only scheduled tribe when we talk about tribe we are having so many other words also for instance we call them as native people aboriginals or originals or indigenous people or in our country we call them as adivasis also right here are there any specific definitions for tribe this question definitely follows after saying ethnic group all these words and all that 
our answer will be definitely in affirmative but the problem is having one comprehensive clear definition is very very difficult i am not saying that it is not possible but uh, it's very difficult and there is no point also because various characteristics will be identifying in order to describe the tribal communities in other words we will be comparing each community with other communities accordingly will be defining what a tribe is and what are these characteristics our next question follows the first and foremost one which we have to remember is i request the members to please note down homogeneity heterogeneity these aspects homogeneity means similarity in culture language rituals we of thinking we of believing in all these this is one of the characteristics of very important characteristic of the tribe that is similarity or homogeneity all tribal groups are different but within one tribal group we come across many similarities culturally and even other uh, aspects also then the second one is what about their language their political system their cultural system these three parameters also we take into consideration i think at the end at the beginning of this uh, discussion i have used certain words like people from the plains people from the hilly areas and all that we come across differences not only that people living in a particular area if they belong to two different communities we come across various differences among them on the basis of linguistic political and cultural traits let me take a simplest example let us imagine of course our rural areas our villages not only different caste people but also communities tribal community people also reside there imagine for a few minutes that in a village we are having lambadas erukalas and also gonds we come across such villages for instance if you go to certain districts we come across many lambada people but they are not living in tandas lambadas specific place where they live is known as tanda similarly chenchus have their village name as penta koyas kudi we usually say they have their own uh, cultural aspects their language also is different let me once again continue the example lambada speak their language gonds their language similarly erukala or enadi or koya or chenchu they too have their own languages so linguistically they are different even politically also say for instance ojha or religious priest plays a vital role in lambada society or gond society along with them political leader also will be there for instance tanda nayak is a political leader among the lambada similarly gond nayak also is a political leader among the gonds here this type of political system will not be there among the chenchus or erukala so their political system is entirely different for instance the chenchus have kudi and uh, zarpenta that is their residential area but they are also have a kind of council system all village elders or chenchu village elders will be the members in that particular council so here what is happening politically they are different from other com uh, tribal communities linguistically they are different culturally also they are different another dimension let us take into consideration how tribal communities define themselves it's a kind of feeling they feel that they are exclusive they are unique their community is unique this is a major difference between tribal communities and non tribal communities in non tribal communities we are all taught and we follow that we the indians umpteen number of communities are there within our country even if you take let us say a political classification on the basis of states you know how many states are there 
and accordingly you are having how many state people are there andhra people persons who speak telugu language but now we cannot say andhra people the reason is andhra pradesh is different and telangana is different both andhra pradesh and telangana these two areas are telugu speaking areas most of the people 90% of the people speak telugu but here we usually identify ourselves in a particular way on the basis of what if you take language as a parameter the dialect may become a parameter for us to differentiate ourselves from other community for instance if you go to the northern part of india many people speak hindi let us imagine in the simplest example if you go to delhi of course the language is hindi no doubt at all but hindi as spoken by the punjabis residing at delhi as spoken by people from uttar pradesh or vidarbha area a jharkhand area or people from bengal and nearby places you can come across the differences here how they talk what words they use and all that and on the basis of that they usually identify themselves as one community in tribal communities this type of identity or this type of identification is very very crucial each tribe claims that they are different and uh, because of this uniqueness they have to be with them only they should not mingle with other persons beyond a particular limit this most of the anthropological studies describe as resistance to change tribals show lot of resistance to change they never change many times i usually hear students particularly undergraduate and graduate students saying that i mean by conversing with me madam they never change they are highly backward they never send their children to schools and all that they usually complain those who have not studied sociology or social anthropology but they will not the reason is the culture which we are imposing on them is not from their culture it is a new one and obviously the resistance to change will be there we should not underestimate their feelings and we should not misunderstand their feelings as if they are resisting change they don't want to develop at all no it's not like that their culture is different and that culture is a unique feature for them that is one of the reasons why they they never uh, accept any new things just like that in non tribal communities we usually come across propensity to change not resistance in at least in certain aspects like usage of mechanical devices and all that but in tribal communities even that also will not be there why when sharasindra rai went to certain tribal communities in order to participate in various jatras or festivities once it so happened in the year 1962 sharasindra rai a very famous uh, social anthropologist who has published vanya jati eastern anthropologist and all these uh, journals for social anthropology he went to a particular village in order to participate in a festival there a kind of competition used to be there among the people they are expected to prepare flags and uh, use them in their rally or shobha yatra there was a tussle between two groups of that particular village the tussle is they have used one particular icon on their flag previous year and at the team of course they were applauded they were praised now the same icon they wanted to use for the for their flag but the other community said no we are using that you cannot use that particular icon on your flag that resulted in some kind of tussle that resulted in some mayhem also violent also it has become when sarasindra rai was there he asked what is the significance of these icons and the, all these flags and all those things so there shows a kind of valor for them the first 
icon used on a flag was that of a train because train is very powerful people walking and all that you can imagine it takes lot of time to reach one place whereas if you board into a train within few hours you can reach that particular place hence rail is more powerful than human being then selected the rail convinced the other group who wanted to have the same why don't you compare rail with aeroplane aeroplane is more powerful than a rail right and those persons when it was explained to them they happily accepted and they used the icon of aeroplane on their flag and of course that festival went on very well this of course it has happened sarasthana rai wrote about this but here what aspect we have to remember here as students of social anthropology this aspect is the uniqueness of a particular community or uniqueness of a particular group or particular asset of a tribal community they never never allow to lose that uniqueness now second part of this unit is a kind of history of tribal societies in india were they tribal communities in our country prior to our constitution or prior to our independence yes our answer will be a big yes in fact when we see literature we come across tribal communities and their uh, narrations etc or naming those tribal communities way back in puranic era shabara one particular word is used even in ramayana i think all of you are well aware of ramayana story and who are these shabaras shabaras are nothing but ab original indigenous people and uh, the present day savaras of andhra pradesh they claim the link between shabara song let us say puranic era particularly of ramayana and the savaras of present day society similarly if you see another uh, literature literary work namely mahabharata of puranic area we are having not one but quite a good number of tribal communities for instance pulinda is one nishada is one why i think some of you might have seen maya bazar a movie telugu movie old movie of course later it was made into color and all that. there one particular raja will be there ghatot kacha who is son of hidimba who is a wife of arjuna this hidimba community is nothing but a tribal community ghatot kacha is nothing but a tribal lord a tribal leader so all these clearly show that tribes are not new to us since ages or since time immemorial we are having separate communities which are termed as different from people who are living in urban areas or rural areas but what has happened during colonial india of course i am making a very big leap only one reason is that though we were under the rule of muslims and all those persons they have not tried to uh okay so change the structure of our villages where many people used to live they were levying taxes and all that on us but uh, beyond that they have not tried to collapse our entire culture this has happened only when britishers entered into our country britishers started completely smashing our culture or completely ruining our culture including tribal communities tribal communities have their own rights right but british government tried to snatch those rights from them and that resulted in a variety of movements i think even today you remember certain movements you might have studied in your history rana bhagat movement do you remember this or kumaram bhim i think his name is familiar to you or rampa rebellion or alluru sitarama raju who has participated in this rebellion which was mostly manned by tribal communities you name it like there are so many tribal movements are there these movements emerged because they were not able to 
bear with the imposition of not only taxes but also snatching their rights and all those things and colonial rule you can say part of our primal freedom struggle also was plagued by these moments particularly tribal community leaders it is not only non tribal communities who have participated in our freedom struggle and more vehemently more vigorously tribal communities also have participated in our freedom struggle what has happened afterwards after getting our independence we have provided certain policies and we are trying to bring them into the mainstream because if they are continuing their own cultural aspects and all that if they are not developed as per the economic definition of the development and all that obviously society will be undeveloped or underdeveloped country in order to avoid this you know in order to gain uh, sorry development economic development and other developments we have created policies and government is implementing these policies fine up to this point is really very good but government has to implement these policies on tribal communities how to know where they are who are they for this purpose our government what it did is depending upon the population of the tribal communities it has de declared certain areas as tribal belts in each state and here comes the question of geographical distribution of tribal communities in india up to this is this clear hello 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 up to this is this clear ma yes ma'am okay now let me uh, share one video which talks about tribal communities of india particularly their population uh, uh compared to our total population later we'll see the distribution of tribal societies and various tribal communities and all that in our country is the slide visible ma yes ma'am ma'am yes ma'am before going into the geographical location and all that let us see certain geographical characteristics along with other characteristics of tribal communities okay how to know which area is a tribal belt i have posed that question and the uh, in continuation to that question first let us remember certain characteristics of tribal communities geographically each tribal community is having a well demarcated area for instance if you say chenchus they are residing in nallamala area and some of the villages of karnool district and mahabuna district you will not come across chenchu community if you go to let us say amalapuram or srikakulam because it is a specific geographical unit or territory which is a characteristic of chenchu community similarly i think those who have traveled from let us say rajamandri to bhadrachalam in a boat on the river godavari we stop at a particular place parent allamma gudi we usually call it in that particular area or your east godavari district we come across very stable communities but even these stable communities is also are having an exclusive geographical territory kondareddis live in a particular area konda kapus in another area renas in another area yenadi in another area savaras in another area all these are tribal communities residing mostly in east godavari part of west godavari districts similarly if you come to adilabad area you will come across your gonds that is the biggest community because along with that even other communities also are there but we usually the moment we say gond we will remember adilabad area because 
goons we will not come across in other districts like karim nagar or mahabub nagar or any other area most of the lambada tandas are situated in warangal and the nearby area to warangal presently it be, it has become mahabubaba district and all that and mahabubnagar district but not in other areas all these show what each tribal community will have well determined geographical territory and these geographical territories invariably either forest or hilly areas or mountainous areas these two characteristic create other characteristic that is they are isolated or more or less isolated from other villages or cities or towns or other social groups even today we come across tribal community people coming to hyderabad selling some kind of roots etc etc but they never stay at hyderabad once their mercantile activities are over then they go back to their tribal villages why what must be the reason because they have their own affinity towards their geographical entity right on the basis of this geographical entity we are also well aware of the socio cultural aspects we have discussed at length hence i am skipping this they are simple societies and their stratification also is very rigid and all that then what about their economic characteristics economically they are sufficient uh what can i say technology in order to either to collect forest products or do agriculture or do hunting and all that but when we compare with our society because we are having monetary economy they do not have any monetary economy most of the societies here comes a development aspect i am not saying all societies for instance if you take i am i am limiting myself to telangana area in telangana area we come across gonds and uh, lambadas these are population wise also very big communities they are very developed also economically they are having monetary economy compared to them chenchus koyas they are not either monetarily or population wise they are not that developed right in most of the tribal communities even today we come across barter system not our money and all those things not only that they never keep a kind of surplus very few things will be surplus whatever they have they consume it that's all they will not produce in other words they will not produce for the market politically they are having their own panchayats but the present day state this concept is there only in few communities not in all other communities religion wise also they are having separate religion their religion is not akin to let us say hinduism or christianity or islam and all that of course many tribal communities converted themselves into these religions but still they continue their religious practices these visuals show how tribal communities limit their positions i have already mentioned they never produce things whatever is required only that much they usually now let us come to geographical distribution wise of course the census mentioned here a little bit old one only some 20 years ago but not much change is there in the population of these communities even now the same number of tribes we have recognized the number of tribes is not changed we have recognized 461 tribal communities living in our country if we compare their population then they constitute somewhere around 8% between 8 and 8.5% population is of tribal communities what are the popular tribes on the basis of population density and population gonds bills santals mina tribe orangs where they are residing accordingly let us see 
if we divide our country into five zones for instance northeastern area himalayas sikkim etc we come across major tribes naga mizo adi lepcha gaddi khasi garo jaintia bhotia similarly if you take western area we come across bills or rebari or meena if you take central area that is madhya pradesh and other areas we have munda oraun santhal gond or poraja or savara tribal communities southern part of india that is beyond vindhya region like tamil nadu kerala part of our state we come across irula thoda badaga paliyan and we also have two island communities andaman nicobar islands and the lakshadweep we are having great andaman isi tribal community jarawa onge living at andaman nicobar islands we are having nicobar is even in lakshadweep not only in andaman nicobar islands if we see the distribution of tribal communities on the basis of language which they speak all tribal languages originated from different languages mazumdar who has given this linguistic classification first he divides linguistic families austro asiatic tibeto chinese dravidian and indo european linguistic families then he saw the language of major tribal communities accordingly he has given the linguistic classification of tribal communities as to asiatic linguistic family languages are khasi language or santali language whose mandaris also have their own language similarly bhotia lepcha abor or garo or naga tribe or lushai these tribal communities talk tibeto chinese linguistic family languages dravidian language why even telugu also is a dravidian language telugu tamilam kannada malayalam all these are dravidian languages not only these languages but languages of tribal communities like gondi or maler or badaga or toda language or korwa language all these are dravidian languages bhils who reside at rajasthan area to take an example they talk indo european languages these are some of the visuals of tribal communities from i think this uh, the second photograph gusadi one particular tribal dance form is a, that we come across even among the gonds because this part i'll uh, leave it the reason is anyhow we are going to discuss about it in a later classes so this is in a nutshell about because our time is over that is the reason i am trying to conclude it today we have seen the interrelationship between social anthropology and other social sciences right we have also discussed about the characteristics of tribal community and distribution of tribal communities geographical though third unit talks about only geographical distribution we also had a glance of linguistic distribution uh and uh, other distributions also here why i had to rush little bit is because for anthropology only six classes are allotted and we are having 15 units so that is the reason i was going a little bit what can i say in a rapid pace so i hope you uh, understand the problem of time constraint my request is if please go through after going home i mean after completion of these classes you are at home only completion of this classes you please go through this so i request you to go through today we have completed second third and part of fourth unit so you please go through that if you are having any doubts you are welcome in our next class we'll be discussing in our next class that means on saturday that is 12th of this month the discussion which we had till now 
do you have any doubts or any clarifications if yes please but you have to understand yes ma'am everything very good that is really very good that is really very good ah uh, here yeah, sanjana is writing and this another person karishma also that is related to nodes okay <laughs> okay anyhow this i mean sanjana is writing I, uh, she is not able to catch with the words and all that i'll be a little bit slow from next class onwards and uh, these are recorded and streamed on youtube even youtube links also are given to you you can listen not one time but uh, quite a good number of times coming to the question of nodes your book itself is a self explanatory one right still if you feel that you require nodes uh i'll be sending it to you practically speaking we are not having any link to share nodes we have to uh, share our google sheets to you so for that you may have to give your mail address to me and i don't know how many of you regularly use google sheets or google drive if you are simply using your phone to listen then that will be a little bit uh, i mean you may not be able to get that so there is one thing think about it do you require notes that you please think about it and in our next chat you please tell me if you still believe that you require notes then do you require only some synoptic type of notes or some question and uh, answers that also please let me know so that i can make some arrangements for that it's not a problem okay sanjana hello hello is sanjana there yes ma'am yeah is it okay yes ma'am okay so let me know by our next class right okay ma'am okay then see you see you okay ma'am thank you ma'am class take care ma'am our next class is on uh, this saturday, saturday ma'am hmm. second saturday okay ma'am right okay. thank you